Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaktur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gaurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishai Shashanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our study of Kapila Shiksha for Bhakti Vai Bhav and we're on chapter number 27 today. I'll just share the screen with everyone. Is everyone able to see the slide okay? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. All right, beginning with the connection with the previous chapter. Having explained the categories of the Saguna Brahman, Kapila concluded the last chapter, in the last chapter, recommending that we should get free from material affection through devotion, detachment, advancement in spiritual knowledge, and contemplation of the Super-Soul. Next, Kapila will elaborate on the process of Sankhya, which reinstates the soul in its original position. Okay, so this is how we describe the connection with the previous chapter. Remember the previous chapter we were hearing the analysis of all the different elements and we heard about the universal form and the need for the Lord to enter there, the need for the super soul to be there. Without the super soul nothing takes place even though you have all the elements of the material nature there, the soul has to be there in order to give life to the dead body. Okay, so this is a connection with the previous chapter. We're going to go ahead and look at this chapter, 27, Understanding Material Nature. It's, a, it's not a long chapter, but it's philosophical, so you have to hear it, you have to go through it a few times. The first section, first nine verses, describe the original consciousness of the living entity and the process to revive it. Well, I'm sure you can all guess what the process is which we need to do to revive our original consciousness. And our original consciousness, of course, is Krishna consciousness. And then the next section, text 10 up to 16, describe the awareness of a liberated soul. We all want to become liberated souls. We want to understand how to recognize who are the liberated souls. 
So that section describes the awareness of such a liberated soul. And then text 17 to 20, we'll have some more questions from Devahuti. She wants to know whether the soul can actually become free from material influence at any time. And then the last section will describe how Lord Kapila is encouraging all of us to practice devotional service. And by devotional service, we can overcome this attachment to the material energy. All right. So this is the different sections of the chapter. We'll go ahead. So the first section, the original consciousness of the living entity and the process to revive it. Here's text number five. It is the duty of every conditioned soul to engage his polluted consciousness, which is now attached to material enjoyment. We have to engage ourselves very seriously in devotional service. And devotional service should be performed with detachment. Detachment from the results, de detachment from the, the, the body which we are using, and detachment from the enemy's body, the people we're opposing. We have to learn to transcend these things, not to be disturbed by them. So when our mind and consciousness will be under full control, then that is our original consciousness. Our original consciousness is to control the mind. Going ahead, the, the essence of Sankhya Yoga. We want to understand what is the essence. We don't want to have to spend a lot of time in doing things which are not too important. We want to know what is really important. So Srila Prabhupada has written, it is therefore recommended in this verse that one engage very seriously in the devotional service of the Lord. This means that one should not think that he is the proprietor, the benefactor, the friend or enjoyer. He should always be cognizant that the real enjoyer is Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the basic principle of Bhakti Yoga. All right, so nothing much there. Just that we should always remember that Krishna is the proprietor, Krishna is the enjoyer, and Krishna is our best friend. So why are we worried if we have such a good friend? Give everything to Krishna and he will take care. So Srila Prabhupada explains we have to be firmly convinced of these three principles. The three principles that Krishna is the proprietor, that Krishna is the enjoyer and Krishna is the best friend. Not only should he understand these principles himself, but he should try to convince others and propagate Krishna consciousness. So this is Srila Prabhupada's encouraging words 
He wants us to take advantage of this knowledge, to distribute it as well, not only just for our benefit but for others also. That is the real test that we've understood the program. Uh, it's important that we, if we're really convinced about Krishna consciousness, then we'll try to convince others, we'll make an attempt to introduce others also to Krishna consciousness. So we ask, how can we purify our mind so that we can accomplish that order? What order? The order was that Krishna is the proprietor, Krishna is the enjoyer, and Krishna is the best friend. This is text number six. One has to become faithful by practicing the controlling process of the yoga system and must elevate himself to the platform of unalloyed devotional service by chanting and hearing about me. Faith is a very important quality. We have to have faith in, in what we're doing. We have to have faith in Krishna. We have to have faith in the spiritual teachers. We have to have faith in the process. And if we don't have faith, then you should try to find it, you try to get it. Be with people who do have faith, follow their program, follow their example, understand their motivation. So we want to become faithful. And here Lord Kapila said, we can do it by practicing the controlling process of the yoga system. And that way we can elevate ourselves to pure devotion, simply by chanting and hearing about Krishna. This is the roots of devotion, to chant and to hear. If we do that hearing and chanting carefully, then certainly we can elevate ourselves to the highest platform. We want to purify the mind, so follow the instructions. All right, someone can read. Let's have, oh, Shraddha Yang Vitaha, right? That's from, these are words taken from this verse, which is here, text number six. Yamaadi Bir Yoga Pate Abhyasan Shraddha Yang Vitaha Mai Bhavena Satyena Madkata Shravanena cha. So, someone can read. Bhakti Priya Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Please Krishna. accept my hum humble obeisance. Shrad Shraddhayan Vitaha. Faith is attained by controlling the senses, either by yoga practice, following the rules and regulations, and practicing the sitting postures or by engaging directly in bhakti yoga as recommended in previous verse. Hare Krishna. All right, so there's different levels of faith. There's the Kanista who has practically no faith. There's the Madhyam who may have faith but not much knowledge. And there's the Uttama who has strong faith and he's also got knowledge as well. And he's willing to use whatever he knows in the service of Lord Krishna. Okay, well, we'll go ahead. Keep reading, Manaji. Yeah. Chitahari Oh, okay. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Mat katha shravane cha. One may come to the standard of faithfulness 
by following the rules and regulations of the yoga system and the same goal can be achieved simply by chanting and hearing about the transcendental activities of the Lord. Rish. Did you ever do any yoga? Prabhu who read Chaitanya, was it? Yes, Prabhuji. Did you ever uh, did you did you do any did you ever do any yoga? Yes, uh, Maharaj, earlier, yes, but not now. Why not? What happened? Transformation, Maharaj. We now know that for me that like uh, we have to do only the devotional service in order to improve in our uh, spiritual life. So devotional service is enough for you, huh? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so you're getting the same goal as you would get if you were to do yoga? <laughs> uh, no, Maharaj. Is your mind peaceful? Yes, very much, Maharaj. Enjoying, happy, always. <laughs> that, be careful. Happiness is always followed by distress. <laughs> All right, someone else read. Danny, the professor. Aresha Maharaj, the word Shya is significant. Bhakti Yoga is direct and the other process is indirect. But even if the indirect process is taken, there is no success unless one comes fully to the direct process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So what's the indirect process? Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, is it Maharaj? Yes, I think so, yes. Right. The direct process is bhakti yoga, so the indirect processes must be these other systems. So Prabhupada said, even we go by the indirect process, there is no success unless we come fully to the direct process of hearing and chanting. So this is the point. All right, one more here. Kirirani Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Satyena means nishkapatena, without duplicity. The impersonalists are full of duplicity. Sometimes they pretend to execute devotional service, but their ultimate idea is to become one with the Supreme. <coughs> All right, can you explain more about this duplicity? Maharaj, I'll try Maharaj. Uh, mm, duplicity means so they are thinking that they are doing the devotional service, but they are cheating themselves as well as the community society also, thinking that uh, they are doing the proper devotional service. Ah, so what's the goal of devotional service? To achieve the pure love of Supreme Personality of Godhead. And is there any difference with the impersonalists? What is their goal? Uh, their goal is that impersonalists they don't believe the form of the Supreme Personality of the Lord Godhead. But we, uh, as a devotees, we believe that the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a Supreme, uh, as an eternal form, and we worship it there. Okay, so uh, the, the, those, those who don't do devotional service, what is their ultimate goal? To merge with the Supreme Personality, to uh, merge with the Supreme Brahma Jyoti. And how do they do it? But they merge like they do, uh, they follow the principles of yoga principle, Ashtanga Yoga. That's they, what I understand. That. Do they get benefit from that? No, Maharaj, it's a, it's a waste of time as well as endeavor, great endeavor is required. It's a waste of time? Yes, ma'am. I thought people get good health from it. But ultimate goal is not achieved, Maharaj. Well, we may chant Hare Krishna, we may not achieve the ultimate goal. But Krishna says that the Svalpam Apiyasi Dharmasya, or a little endeavor is sufficient to remove us from the danger, from the great danger. Yes. Okay, good. Good answers. Did we read the last one? Sadhyena means niskapatena? Yes, Maharaj. We read Maharaj. Okay. We'll go ahead. 
who's going to read for us? Oh, sorry. Kopi Jana Prabhu. Kopi Jana Prabhu. Seven to ten. Kapila Muni offers further instructions to guide yoga practitioners according to the preliminary rules and regulations of yoga. Following these preliminary rules and regulations, that is Yama and Yama, prescribed from the verse six to eight, purifies the practitioner and prepares him for meditation on the super soul. The process. That will be described in the chapter 28. Alright. So the preliminary rules are the yam and niyam. Do we have do we have any any yam and niyam in bhakti yoga? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, four regulated principles are those. Okay. Anything else? And not to associate with the Four regulative principles, are those things we should do or not do? Uh, the way we interpret, like, not to eat, uh, not to do illicit sex, so then it's not to do. Uh, okay, not to do illicit sex, not to do nonsense, right? Yes. Want to purify yourself? We have to prepare for meditation, so we have to give up all the bad habits and we have to be ready to sit and absorb ourselves. And who do, what, who do the yogis absorb the mind on? Yogis absorb in, in the Paramatma, in the Super Soul. All right, yes, the Super Soul. So, is there any special qualification for that? No, before, before uh, uh, they get absorbed, they get they have to get purified of all their existence. In the case of the yogis, but in the case of the uh, devotees, it is not so. They can get engaged in the devotional service, and they eventually get purified. Eventually. Ah, is that right? Yes. You, you said eventually, yes, yeah? Gradually, eventually. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, the yogi wants to meditate on the Super Soul. That, that will be described chapter 28. That's the next chapter. All right. Now, what's next in this next section? This is from Third Canto. Chapter 27, but text number 4. Someone read. Janaki Mataji. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Pranam Maharaj. Suradam Sarva Bhutanam. The power of friendship is limited. Although one claims to be friend, he cannot be friend unlimitedly. There are an unlimited number of living entities, and our resources are limited. Therefore, we, we cannot be any real benefit to the people in general. The best service to the people in general is to awaken them to Krishna consciousness so that they may know that the supreme enjoyer, the supreme proprietor and the supreme friend is Krishna. Then this illusory dream of lording it over material nature will vanish. Simad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 27th chapter, 4th purport. All right. So, We claim to be the friend. <laughs> the power of prophecy. See, you see, we we cannot just become Krishna's friend so easily. It's not so easy to become a friend of the Lord, but we can hear about Him, and we can chant about Him. We can do those things, but if we have to, if we try to become His friend. That is something very special. You have to be a special devotee to be able to make friendship with the Lord. So, 
So Prabhupada says the best service to the people in general is to awaken them to Krishna consciousness. And then Prabhupada describes what that means, that they should know Krishna is the supreme proprietor, the supreme enjoyer and the best friend. So this is, this is what we are looking for. All right, now talking about the super soul, the different characteristics of the super soul are going to be described. We should understand there's not simply one soul, we are the jiva soul, but there's the other soul which is the supreme soul. So that's going to be described for us. All right, text number 11, someone read. Yeah. The awareness of a liberated soul. A pure devotee can see the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in everything materially manifested. He is present there only as a reflection. But a pure devotee can realize that in the darkness of material illusion, the only light is the Supreme Lord who is its support. Srimad Bhagavatam, that chapter 27, chapter 11, verse purple. So this is the liberated soul. This is how he sees. He can see the presence of the Lord in everything. We don't have quite that vision. We may try. But Prabhupada then explains that the Lord is present everywhere in everything material only as a reflection. But the pure devotee can realize that in the darkness of material illusion, the only light is the Supreme Lord. So that the pure devotee is able to make this distinction. He sees the Lord, he, the, although the Lord's only there is a, 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 a reflection, but still the pure devotee can understand that it, it is the Lord who is behind everything, who is the real support. So liberated souls will think like that. We were discussing last night. Somebody was asking me, uh, he said, uh, you know, is Prabhupada a liberated soul? So I said, yes. He said, then why does he wear a sweater? He said, he said, if he was a liberated soul, he should be aloof from the material conditions. He shouldn't need to wear a sweater and, or a big jacket. So would any of you like to answer that question? How would you deal with that kind of inquiry? Yes? Yes? Uh, Prabhupada, in, uh, the, the pure devotees, they may not feel it internally, but for our eyes, we are looking at him wearing the, the sweater, but for him personally, it's not uh, required. It's not required since when? Th those pure devotees, when they realize... The, the, the presence of the Lord in everywhere, and when, when they are pure devotees, they can. <laughs> well, so somebody claims to be a pure devotee, someone has to claim to be a pure devotee, and someone has to claim to be not a pure devotee. Yeah, can I say? Yeah. He is liberated in his consciousness. He may have a material body in his material world, which may require his jacket and other things to keep in his service, in his service of Krishna. But his consciousness is already in a liberated stage. Yes. His consciousness should be awakened to a higher stage. Liberated souls Someone may be, what, how do we define a liberated soul? When he 
when he is not affected by the happiness and the distress of this material world. So if he wears a coat, does that mean he's affected by the happiness and the distress? We could say in the cold weather he feels some happiness from his coat. And the, the, the same goes with the, the same goes with the 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 uh, if he's a, a liberated soul, he, you know, does he need to do these things? Does he need to dress himself like that with hats and coats and gloves and something? He's supposed to be a liberated soul, isn't he? He's supposed to be aloof from all material conditions. Not necessary, Maharaj. Why not? Externally, he may be whatever showing, but internally, because it is something, liberation is concerned with the soul, not with the body. So, externally, he may be wearing cap and coat, whatever it is. But it is something to do with the internal. There are two other hands raised, Maharaj. One is Rashish Prabhu. Yeah. The other is Gopi Krishna. Gopi Janakrishna. Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dhanavad Pranams. I think to understand this, uh, we can refer to the verse from Bhagavad Gita, uh, Brahma Bhuta Prasannat Mana Shochati Na Kamchati. So he has he has overcome the modes, and and there is no more uh, desires or lamentation for for anything. So then then he's a liberated soul. Yeah, that's that's what I am sharing, Maharaj. Feel free to. Well, if someone's wearing a jacket and coat. Does it mean he has desire for something? Not really. Uh, you 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 still have the material body, and and that needs to be protected from the weather. Mm -hmm. so, so that does not reflect having desires. It is not for fashion. It is it is to it is to protect from the external weather. So so one still needs to protect the body because because the body is still material. Uh -huh. Yes. Anybody else would like to contribute on this question? Maharaj, uh, the, the 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 body being protected by a liberated soul is. Uh, with a clear understanding that, that the body has to be used for the service of Krishna, while uh, a non devotee or conditioned soul, he protects the body so that he can enjoy with his body. So that is that makes it difference. Utilizing everything for the service of Krishna makes it a perfection or the uh, super uh -huh. and and using everything for the sensual adaptation is the conditioned stage. Right. Yes. Krishna, yes, Prabhu, go ahead. On, on the same lines, Maharaj, of Gopijana Prabhu, uh, Maharaj, this body is also a gift of Lord, and the proprietor of this body is also Krishna. So we have to uh, maintain our health properly so that it can be used in the service of Krishna. In that aspect, whatever possibilities are available on this earth to keep a body intact to serve Krishna and the devotees, to that extent, we have to protect ourselves, Maharaj. Well, I, but I thought it was a liberated soul. You say material body. I thought his body is spiritual. Yes, Maharaj, because this body is used in Krishna consciousness in propagating the uh, mission of his spiritual master. So it is uh, spiritualized already, Maharaj. This body is no more uh, material for a devotee. So, so, if, it's, it, so if it's not, not material, why does he wear a sweater? Maharaj, this body is uh, actually, this body belongs to this material nature. So it is affected. But as mentioned, internally one is liberated soul, but however, since we are in this uh, material world, we are, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it as, uh, affected by these three modes of material nature, this body, basically. Yes. And so for that reason, to engage uh, and uh, do more Krishna consciousness services, we will have to protect our health, Maharaj. That's my little understanding. <laughs> 
Yeah, but they, they argue that, well, I thought you had a spiritual body <laughs> because you're a liberated soul. So liberated souls, do they get sick? Do liberated souls get sick? Yes, Maharaj. Liberation has to do only with the consciousness, not with the body. Okay. Liberation, I mean, body can get affected. It, it doesn't mean that if a liberated person keeps his finger, I mean, by chance, if it so happens, that he comes in contact with the finger, fire, that he, his finger will not burn. But he may not get effect of the pain and uh, pleasures. But the body gets affected. So the so the liberated soul, to use it effectively, the, the, the given body for the service of Krishna, he protects it. Okay. Yeah, there's one verse. It says, Yaha yasya hare adashi karmana manasagira nikilas papiyavastastu jivan mukta tsuchate. Describing the jivan mukta, the liberated soul. The liberated soul will use body, mind, and words all for the service of Lord Krishna. So if you look at the back in our temple, you know, you would see like uh, there would be some th opportunity to do devotional service. There would be different dresses of the deities to be made for the deities. Many different services can be done. Body, mind and words can all be used in the service of Krishna and you can become a liberated soul. But as you say, we have a material body. The body is not fully spiritualized, but it's becoming spiritualized. It takes some time. So in the process of the spiritualization, we may get sick and we have to take care of the body. Now that happened even to great souls. There were great souls. We, we read even Lord Chaitanya sometimes would get indigestion and have to go to see Murari Gupta. Can you think of any other examples of great souls who, who got bewildered? Yeah, Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, Arjuna, in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, says that Matra Sparshas to Pontea, Situshna Sukadukada, Agama Parinanita, Samti Dikshasa Bharata. So the liberated or a person is a sober person. He tolerates uh, extreme like cold and hot and uh, misery and uh, happiness, everything. So such a person is called a liberated soul. So Arjuna is a liberated soul. Can we say that, Maran? Yes, I think so. I think he's definitely not an ordinary person, although he's playing the part of the ordinary person. But he's a very great soul because he's come with Lord Krishna. And he's always with Lord Krishna. He's deeply attached to Lord Krishna. So that's a sign of his greatness. So yes, Arjuna is a great soul. There are liberate yes. There are three hands up. Dhanidhi Prabhu, Rasesh Prabhu, and Ketanesh Prabhu. All right, let's hear. Harish Maharaj, uh, please accept my uh, respectful obeisances. Yes. Ma Maharaj, I got, I got a question. Uh, um, to, to, I, to maintain my uh, health, I am playing badminton uh, at least once in four days in a week. Uh, <laughs> but but, uh, I, but I have heard instructions uh, that. Uh, one should not engage in such sports. Uh, I have read somewhere. So, what, what, what should I do, Maharaj? Well, you know, there are Vedic sports, you know. <laughs> Things like <laughs> swimming and wrestling. That was kind of Vedic sport. I don't know about badminton. Of course, I heard sometimes the ladies would play these kind of games on the roof of their buildings. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand. You need some exercise. The only problem is sometimes we get a bit more attached to the, to the exercise than we, 
then we should do, you know. <laughs> exactly, Maharaj. I'm getting attached to it. I'm finding entertainment in that. Both, <laughs> both grossly and subtly, I'm getting attached to that. Even though my mind is deceiving me, because I know that for exercise, I can go daily to temple. We have got a temple in Bangladesh, and I can wash the vessels. It's more than exercise. But I'm not finding interest in that. Rather, I like to uh, play badminton. So, uh, <laughs> well, you're very honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, my Raj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please bless me to, to improve Hare Krishna. Yeah, it's definitely a problem. You have to, we have to fight against these things. We could just go to Kirtan and dance in ecstasy, and we could just chant and dance even though you were alone. You know, you could play some, you could play a recording of Kirtan or, you know, listen to the Kirtan which is going on in the temples and dance. You don't have to be with others. And you can get exercise that way in the service of Krishna. We are allowed. We are allowed to do japa walks. You know, that's allowed. You go for a walk yes, and chant. That time you can do that. That's good. That's a way to keep healthy. Also, go for a good walk. Okay. Thanks, Lord Mara. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, going ahead, inferring the presence of the soul and the super soul. Go ahead, someone read text number 12. Who's, who's, who's Srimad Bhagavatam 3.27.12 The presence of the Supreme Lord can be realized just as the sun is realized first as a reflection on water and again as a second reflection on the wall of a room. Although the sun itself is situated in the sky. Oh. Okay, it's an interesting example. Prabhu, keep reading. Here's the purport, a section from the purport. Yes, Maharaj. The example given, in, given here with is perfect. The sun is situated in the sky far, far away from the surface of the earth, but its reflection can be seen in a pot of water in the corner of the room. The room is dark and the sun is far away in the sky, but the sun's reflection on the water illuminates the darkness of the room. <laughs> okay. So, the presence of the Lord. Pro, uh, Srila Vyasadeva has given us this example <laughs> that we can realize that he gives the example, first of all, the reflection and then the second reflection. First is a reflection and then a second reflection. And Prabhupada said, this example was perfect. Why is it perfect? Well, the sun is far away, but its reflection can be seen in a pot. The room is dark and the sun is far away, but the sun's reflection on the water illuminates the darkness of the room. So how does that compare to the super soul? What's the super soul doing? Watching, watching Maharaj. He is pervading all the living entities, everywhere. Okay, the super soul is watching. Is he doing anything else? Uh, keeping record of everything, good and bad. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an informer. Huh? He's a traitor. He's a spy. <laughs> good, but he's good, Maharaj. He's spy, but. Uh, for the so for the conditioned soul, good because he want to take it to the right path. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Amara Tanda Pranam. The super soul is just eagerly waiting more than the soul when the soul will turn towards the super soul and uh, seek uh, seek the blessings of the super soul. Oh. The super soul is waiting to see for the individual to do what? To think about Krishna, engage in Krishna consciousness. Oh, or... well, to, okay, to come to Krishna consciousness, to come, surrender himself, to give up his independence. 
and to take the shelter of the Lord. All right. So it's it's easy enough to understand the presence of the this soul, but to understand that there's two souls, that's difficult. Not everyone is able to appreciate that. They can appreciate that there's a spiritual particle, but they don't know. They think some people often think that, oh, it's the same soul in everyone. But it's not. There's a soul, the individual soul, the jivatma, and the super soul. So that has to be understood. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I have a question, Maharaj. Yes. I have a question, Maharaj. Maharaj, we know the size of the soul is mentioned, Maharaj. We have come across in Srimad Bhagavan the size of the soul. Uh, the tip of the hair cut into 10,000 parts of it. Uh, Maharaj, my question is about the super soul, Maharaj. Where and how it is actually defined, uh, the size or... Uh, the size of the super soul. Well... Uh, it's described to be like the thumb, about the size of the thumb, in, com in relation to the body, the super soul, the size, in size, is like about the size of our thumb. That's mentioned in one place. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. And we have information, of course, how it's decorated. It's form and how it dresses, how it's dressed. Okay, we'll go ahead. Text number 13. Someone read. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam 3.27.13. The self realized soul is thus reflected. First in the threefold ego and then in the body, senses and mind. Okay. Satyadrit. With that correct vision, one can engage everything in the service of the Lord. Example of the rose. Do you know the example of the rose? Yes, Madhiji, did you know that example of the no, rose? No, 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 Maharaj. You don't? You can read the purport, text number 13. Yes, Maharaj. A concrete example can be given in this connection. A conditioned soul sees a very beautiful rose, and he thinks that the nice aromatic flower should be used for his own sense gratification. This is one kind of vision. A liberated soul, however, sees the same flower as a reflection of the Supreme Lord. Lord. He thinks this beautiful power, power is made possible by the superior power of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, it belongs to the Supreme Lord and should be utilized in his service. So, what's a, what, what should happen to the rose? It should be used in the service of the Lord. It should be offered at the lotus feet of the Lord. Everything in this material world, whatever it is, it must be used in the service of the Lord. Okay. So we're told in the verse, the soul is first reflected in the threefold ego and then in the body, senses and mind. So that is the reflection. The reflection of the soul. And we're told also that with correct vision, we can use everything in the service of the Lord. Can, is it, can, you, can you think of anything you wouldn't like to use in the service of the Lord? Yes? Yes, Father. What? Maharaj, whatever we... Uh, I mean, uh, I'm a housewife in preparing any food for the family members. And we, uh, I use mainly or uh, make mainly for the service of the Lord. I mean, offer uh, the Lord the food. It's 
Whatever I use, I will use for the service of the Lord. Okay. Try to use everything for the service of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, Bharat, nowadays I feel like whatever I am buying, I first think of buying it for the Lord. I mean, to, that everything by, what I buy, I think I should use that thing in the service of the Lord. Whatever I receive, I first think of the Lord, that I will use this for the Lord, or I will use this in my altar or I will use this uh, when, I, when I make prasadam. Uh, so uh, this way my consciousness is being changed gradually, Maharaj. Yes. I'm trying my best, Maharaj. Okay, you're trying your best. But we would say, you know, it's good, you, you know, you, 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 you buy things and you think you're buying it for the Lord, but, you know, often we buy things in the shops and in the market produced by people who are not devotees. And it may be all chemicals and, you know, it's not very pleasant things. It's unpleasant even. Can you offer that to the Lord? If it's, everything's full of chemicals and maybe they put some fish oil in the milk and I no, don't... No, Maharaj, that I will take care of, uh, I will read the contents and whatever it is, and then only I offer. Do you grow anything yourself for the Lord? Have you got a garden? Can you grow anything there? No, wow. Maharaj, I have under no <laughs> raw land is there around me. Only the pots are there in that. Only Tulsi Maharaj at present, Maharaj. Oh, you have? I, I wish, I wish that thing, Maharaj. Really? Could... Yes, Maharaj. Do you know how to grow everything? Do you know gardening? No, Maharaj. No, oh, Maharaj, I don't know, but I recently I have started liking it. I recently, yesterday only I visited a family, family friend garden. Uh, it was very nice. So, so that time I thought this, that uh, I should also have this, like this house and land so that I can grow vegetables and then uh, on flowers and all things that so that I can offer them to the Lord. Have that wish. Yeah, that's what we want to do actually. Offer everything to if we can produce it ourselves, it's more, it's more devotional. Okay, so here we have different levels of consciousness. Wakefulness. Maharaj, I have a question, Maharaj. Yes. Okay. What's your question? Like you said, uh, you asked a question. Are you producing something? Uh, on this, Srila Prabhupada mentions that. Um, uh, we should have uh, agriculture and the cow so that all the economic problems uh, are going to be solved. But actually, even though I am like a, from a farmer uh, uh, community, but now I became an engineer, but I don't know how to do the farming. So would you enlighten how to do the proper uh, uh, farming so that going back to the basics? Well, you have to, you have to, you have to be trained. You have to go and learn from people who know. You go and work with people who are doing farming. You will learn very It is a hardship, Maharaj. It is too hard, hard work. <laughs> yeah, we don't like hard work, right? Like in a hot summer, we have to sweat, and it is a hard labor. Actually, in the cold winter, so these are the certain challenges. Well, there's always problems in every job. You know, to sit in an air-conditioned office also is not very good. <laughs> True, Maharaj. You get lazy, no exercise. At least if you're out there in the elements, you can breathe the fresh air. <laughs> so we have to be willing to accept some little austerity for the pleasure of Krishna. All right. <laughs> Maharaj, can I can I ask question? Okay. Mataji, Prabhu, Maharaj, in last slide, there is threefold ego. What is this threefold ego? Well, there's ego in that, the mode of goodness, ego in the mode of passion, and ego in the mode of ignorance. So all egos are different? Yes. Did you think they were all the same? 
No, I think the only false ego that we are identity, identifying ourself is a uh, our body is a body as a self. Yes. That is false ego. But everybody's false ego will be mixed with different degrees of passion and ignorance. And some people may have some goodness there in their false ego. So it's all combination of the modes of nature. So they, we, we say the threefold modes of nature. Do you understand? No? No, Maharaj. Not clearly. Well, I'm, I'm saying that there's different degrees of false ego. Some people's false ego will be very, very strong and others' false ego may be, you know, a, a little more strong and somebody has hardly any false ego. So it depends on which mode you are? Yes. Okay, okay, got it, Maharaj. Okay. All right, who's going to read text 14? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, 3.27.14 uh, Wakefulness, sleep and deep sleep. Although a devotee appears to be merged in the five material elements, the objects of material enjoyment, the material senses and material mind and intelligence is understood to be awake and to be freed from the false ego. So, what can we understand from here? That to be awake, awake means with, is freed from false ego. Well, that means it's a really quite an elevated soul, right? So we're talking about a devotee. The devotee appears to be merged. He appears to be merged in the five material elements. The five material elements, you know what they are, and the objects of material enjoyment. You know, you know what that is? The objects of material enjoyment means also the different things for the pleasures of the senses. The objects of sense enjoyment. And then you have the material senses, the material mind and intelligence. So he is understood to be awake and to be freed from the false ego. In other words, he doesn't think he's the proprietor of anything. He considers himself to be a humble servant. He may, he may be behaving like this, being a servant, just to give pleasure to Krishna. Because it's two years since people have been able to move around. So Krishna may be feeling compassion. Go ahead, text number 15. Hadesham Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. The living entity can vividly feel his existence as the seer, but because of the disappearance of the ego during the state of deep sleep, he falsely takes himself to be lost like a man who has lost his fortune and feels distressed, thinking himself to be lost. Maybe, you, maybe you've seen that kind of a situation take place in your own life. Did you ever see anyone, any one of your colleagues that lost everything? Yes, Maharaj. Who was it? Materially, we can give example some uh, I mean, people we know materially, but devotional, we don't know, I don't remember. Well, give some material examples. Yeah, we know, we have my, I have my own cousin brother who has lost, who has earned a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, material wealth in, in his uh, very young age and then uh, everything is lost now and he's, uh, I mean, 
in very distressed condition now. Who was this? He is my cousin brother Maharaj. Oh, your cousin brother. Okay. Yes. So when people lose their fortune, sometimes, sometimes they even give up their life. We had one man in Hong Kong, he lost all his money, he killed himself. He couldn't bear to live with no money, nothing in the bank. He just, he just ended his life. So that's not good, of course. But this is the effect of the uh, one who feels his, his existence as a seer. He, he's thinking he's a body, right? Yes, Master. So because of the disappearance of the ego during the state of deep sleep, he falsely takes himself to be lost. Okay, we'll go ahead. Text number 16. Someone read. Hafish Prabhu, Dhanvat Pranams Maharaj. When by mature understanding one can realize his individuality, then the situation he accepts under false ego becomes manifest to him. Oh. So, this person, what would you say about this person? He seems to be a little more advanced. Yeah, so he has, he has matured in his understanding. Yes. Uh, he now understands he is not this body. Uh, he, is, he is the spirit soul. Uh, and, and then he realizes that the life uh, that he has been leading under the thinking that he is this body uh, was was wrong and then he takes up to the right path. Oh. Oh. Possible. Yes, uh, his mature understanding, he realizes his individuality then the situation he accepts under false ego becomes manifest to him. So the false ego is manifesting a particular realization to the, the person. He can realize his individuality. But there's no mention about realizing the Supreme. Oh, here is Prabhupada's purport. This is taken from Barijan Prabhu's book, on, where he's writing about the different slokas of the Bhagavatam. So he describes that, Thus Srila Prabhupada has compared a person's waking life to his Krishna consciousness. So when we're awake, that is Krishna consciousness. His dream lives, one after another, to his, to his succession of illusory identities caused by bodily identification and his experience of deep sleep in which he loses his awareness of his individual identity to merging with the Lord's impersonal effulgence. So we see different outcomes which could come about. So a person's waking life is Krishna consciousness, his dream lives they cause, they cause bodily identification, usually. And his experience of deep sleep, in which he loses his awareness, that is compared to merging with the Lord's impersonal effulgence.
Okay. You can see it's very philosophical. So three stages of consciousness is sleep, deep sleep, and wakefulness. So wakefulness is Krishna consciousness. Sleep is like the person in material life. And deep sleep is the person who has completely forgotten his identity. His experience of deep sleep, he loses his awareness of his individual identity compared to merging with the Lord's impersonal effulgence. So deep sleep is merging into the effulgence. Whereas wakefulness is Krishna consciousness. Okay, someone like to read this next slide? Sanatan Prabhuji? Shankarshan Prabhu? Sharada Mataji? Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance, this. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Merging does not mean losing individuality. Even while merged in the 24 elements of Magda, he can keep his individuality as the eternal servitor of the Lord. Either in the spiritual nature or in the material nature, such a servitor is to be considered a liberated soul. Hare Krishna. Okay. Okay, so the impersonalists, they would like to lose their individuality. But Prabhupada writes, even while merged in the 24 elements, he can keep his individuality. Either in the spiritual nature or in the material nature, such a servitor is to be considered a liberated soul. So, what's the qualification of the liberated soul? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. In any condition. Any position. But he, what's he going to do? Is he going to do anything or will he stop all activities? He doesn't do anything or he does something? He keeps serving the Lord in any state. Right. He's a, he's a servitor of the Lord. doesn't matter if it's the material world or the spiritual world. It doesn't matter if he's li fully liberated or not, but he will continue to do service for the Lord. He always thinks of himself as a servant. All right, next, who's going to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Devabhuti in verse 17 to 20. My dear Brahmana, does material nature ever, ever give release to the spirit soul? Since one is attached to the, attracted to the other eternally, how is their separation possible? So this is a very good question. Does material nature ever give release to the soul? And then she says, one is attracted to the other eternally. So, what is attracted to what eternally? The Supreme Lord. Is attracted to what? Who's attracted? The of Krishna. Yeah, the... the the material nature, the body, is attracted. Somehow it's attracted. It's attracted to other souls. You can't have a, you can't have a body without a soul. If you have no soul in the body, it's a dead body. And the soul also needs a body. You can't just bring the soul without having second body. Go ahead. What's her other questions? 
Shall pray, Mother. You can continue, Mother, this slide. Thank you, sir. How can there be freedom for the soul as long as material nature acts on him and binds him? So we are conditioned souls. And the material nature has got us bound. How can we get free? Go ahead. Even if the great fear, even if the great fear of bondage is avoided by mental speculation and inquiry into the fundamental principles, it may still appear again since its cause has not ceased. Okay. The great fear of bondage. We're certainly all afraid of that. We don't like to be prisoners in the material world. We like freedom. But there is bondage. So one way to avoid that fear is mental speculation and inquiry. But it's still, it may still appear again, since its cause has not ceased. The cause of our bondage is what? Body. Material attachment, desires, material desires and greed for these things. So. That's the cause, and that's always going to be there. Even though we may try to avoid it, we may go away somewhere, but it's going to come again. There's always going to be, you can't become desireless. You cannot just simply be without desire. So this is the problem the jnanis have, that they want to, they try to be without desire. Or the Buddhists, they want to be without desires. They want to negate everything. They do negation of all, all the material world. But our process is to use everything in the service of Krishna, not to negate, but to purify. We want to accept the material energy in the service of Lord Krishna. It's very important. So this is Devahuti's question. Here's a quote from Prabhupada. Someone like to read here? Examine the terms Icha Dvesha in relation to the material bondage. Text 20. Two kinds of propensities arise in the living entity. One propensity is Icha, which means desire to lord it over material nature or to be as great as the Supreme Lord. Everyone desires to be the greatest personality in this material world. Dvesha means envy. When one becomes envious of Krishna or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one thinks, why should Krishna be the all and all? I am as good as Krishna. <laughs> Alright, so envy is one problem. Of course, this Icha and Dvesha, this is taken from Icha Dvesha Samutena Danva Mohina Bharata. Right? All living entities are born into the world overcome by desire and envy. Desire to enjoy the material world. And envy, envy of the controller. Envy of anybody who's got more than me. Anyone who has more than us, we envy him. So everyone has this problem in the material world. We are envious of Krishna. We think, I'm as good as Krishna, why Krishna? And when we think like that about Krishna, then we think like that about all of Krishna's parts and parcels. And we see all living entities in that light. So this is not good. This is, that is not the principle of Krishna Consciousness. So these two propensities, they have to be controlled. Okay, there's a bit more of that quote. Keep reading, 
Manaji? These two items desire to be the Lord and envy of the God are the beginning cause of material bondage. As long as a philosopher, salvationist or voidist has some desire to be supreme, to be everything or to deny the existence of God, the cause remains and there is no question of his liberation. Okay. So one may think we have to give up our desire. When one may try to stop desire. Can you do that? Can you stop desire? Not at all possible, Mother. No, not at all. So, what do we have to do? The Krishna Maharaj, we have to incline more and more devotional services so that gradually our all uh, desires will vanish. Oh, really? All your desires will vanish? If you incline more and more to serve the Krishna and his uh, beloved devotees, like all uh, Vaishnavas, so our mind and heart, soul will, uh, uh, will be in the Lord's uh, lotus feet. Our thinking everything will be in the lotus feet of the Lord, so gradually our all desires will vanish. Mm, I don't know, I don't, I'm worried when you talk about desires all vanishing. <laughs> you, you know, desires vanishing. That's like people want to make the mind blank, make the mind empty, don't think of anything. So no desires, that's, that's impersonalism. We have, you have to be careful if you talk like that. It's going to give people room to become mayavadis. Do you understand? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Desire to serve Lord, that desire, uh, spiritual desire is there, but material desire will vanish. That I am good. Okay. Spiritual desires. We have to purify the desires. Yes. Mm -hmm. Serving more and more to Krishna. We want to see his beautiful uh, lotus feet. That desire will be there. If that desire will be more and more, this material desire will be going to vanish. That uh, I wanted to tell. Mm. Of course, not everyone will pray that they want to see God. Remember, our mood has to be the servant. We come to give service, not to demand Krishna to serve us. So we may say, you know, how I can go there to serve Krishna? Krishna is so great. He is the Swayam Bhagavan. I'm just a tiny jiva. I am nothing compared to Krishna. And there's so many others here who are following with Krishna. So many trucks, so many people, so many goods. We all want to follow Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. We don't want to just be without the center. Krishna has to be in the center. Otherwise, we'll never get liberation. Thank you, Maharaj. Wonderful explanation. Go ahead. Maharaj, I have a question, Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, this, I am envious of other, okay, I agree. But why I am envious of Krishna, I do not understand. Would you enlighten, Maharaj? Well, we're envious of Krishna because Krishna has more than us. You know, somebody... But he's has... our original father. Yes. But we're not thinking of him like that. You're thinking he's your competitor. You, we have that mood, we're trying to compete with Krishna. Krishna's got more money. Krishna's better looking. Krishna's got more fame. Krishna's got more strength. He's got everything more than us. So we envy him. Krishna is the proprietor, it's all Krishna's, we have to use everything for him. We envy him. 
Why Krishna? Why we have to give everything for Krishna? We're thinking, I did this, I earned this, I used my intelligence, I worked hard, I made money. We're thinking we're the doer. And that's why we're envious of Krishna. We're not, we're not seeing properly. We have, to, we have to be very careful how we act and what we do. We have to try to see everything according to the scriptures. And don't be blinded by the material energy. Whenever we forget Krishna, then that's when the problem comes. You try to decide things rashly, impulsively. That's the passion. We have to understand we are fallible, we, we make mistakes. But there are devotees there, they never make mistakes. They do everything very nicely. All right, there's another quote here. Someone read this one, the slide. Hare Krishna. I'll be reading it, Maharaj. An honest man is not afraid of the police. Sridhar Swami comments in his connection that by association with material nature alone, one does not become conditioned. Conditional life begins only after one is infected by the modes of material nature. If someone is in contact with the department, with the police department, that does not mean that he's a criminal. As long as one does not commit criminal criminal acts, even though there is a police department, he is not punished. Okay, that's reasonable enough. You may work in the police station, doesn't mean you're a criminal. You may have to go to the police station to report something lost. You didn't commit any, you didn't make any crime. You just went to report something, that something's missing. Or maybe someone's missing. You want to find them. So conditioned life means you're not affected by the modes of nature. Or, or rather conditioned life begins when we are affected by the modes of nature. So someone may be a liberated soul, just like we talked about, you can see in the picture, Prabhupada is wearing his big hat and he's got his chadar on. So why did he need all these clothes to keep warm? He's a liberated soul, right? Well, yes, he is a liberated soul. Liberated soul doesn't mean you cannot wear a chadar and a hat when it's cold. Liberated soul means use body, mind and words in the service of the Lord. Liberated soul means working for the service of Krishna. So even though he's in the material energy, he comes to give service to the devotees. Let me do something, Srila Prabhupada would say. Give me the chance, let me do some service. So you go to the police station, do some work, do something, doesn't mean you're a criminal. Here we are, we are in the material world, we could say we're all criminals. We're all here in the material world, but we're not doing anything wrong at this time. We hope not, hope you're not doing anything wrong at this time. And if you keep serving Krishna, then one day you get out of this world. So how can one develop serious devotional service? Would anybody like to tell us how you can develop serious devotional service? What do you need to do? Let's hear Arik from Smaraj. some. Yes? Uh, Arik Smaraj, uh, take the advantage of engaging more into, more, uh, taking more association of the devotees already realized. 
yeah, taking more association of the devotees. All right, more association of the devotees. I don't know. You see the different levels of devotees. It's going to depend on the the benefit you get from association will depend on the level of the devotees. You can reflect what you get. If you associate with people who are very advanced, of course it will be very powerful, very helpful for you. And if you associate with people who are not very serious, who don't have much faith, it's not going to be good for you. Yes, Maharaj. I actually meant about uh, uh, duties of, uh, you know, who are already there in this uh, mission and very senior to me, Maharaj. Okay. But senior in what way? A senior in, uh, in uh, engaging in Krishna consciousness activities in the temple marriage, especially in Balram Desh, we have uh, many senior devotees who gives us uh, seva to do, so that uh, we engage in those kind of services. Okay, very nice. But we want everyone to understand there is qualities in association. So how do we develop serious devotional service? It's not just simply physical proximity. It's not just being close to someone. We may think, oh, now it's Zoom, you know, I don't get a chance to be close to someone. We may complain like that, but actually we should be glad. We're getting a very nice chance to become Krishna conscious and to distribute Krishna consciousness to others. So how we can develop serious devotional service, first of all, it says, Swadharma, Swadharma Amalatmanam, meaning by executing prescribed duties with a pure mind. So it's very, very important. You're going to do your prescribed duties. You have to keep your mind pure. That means you have to chant the holy name, you have to worship Tosi, read the books about Krishna, like that, that will keep the mind purified. And then you have to do bhakti for a long time without desire for fruit of results. Many people come and do bhakti, they have a lot of desires. I don't know how they manage to get the results. It's, it's, done. it's hard to know what people want. Okay, executing duties with a pure mind without desire for fruit of result and doing it for a long time. What's a long time? <laughs> Somebody I'm doing it for a long time. I've been doing it two weeks. <laughs> right? What's a long time? And then, nourishment by hearing about me. Jnanena drata tatvena, drista tatvena, with perfect knowledge and visualizing the absolute truth. So these are some of the different ways, different qualifications we need to develop serious devotional service. We need to get nourishment by hearing about Krishna. Just like Srivast Pandit went to hear uh, Devananda Pandit speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. Now Devananda Pandit wasn't really a Vaishnava devotee, he had some other philosophy. But, uh, but Srivast Pandit went there to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. He wanted to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. But they ended up offending Sri, Srivas Pandit. Srivas Pandit didn't take offense, but Lord Chaitanya took offense. Anyway, hearing about the Lord is very important. We have to hear. And it should be nourishing, it should be pleasant, it should be nice to us for us to hear. Then perfect knowledge. Strong detachment, austerity, controlling the mind and senses, will 
self-absorption. Okay, so those are, these are the, the different ways what we need to do to develop serious devotional service. Strong detachment. We want to change the detachment. Instead of being detached, we want to change it. We want to change the detachment to Krishna consciousness. Not just simply detachment from the material world, but it, should, it shouldn't just be Falgu Vairagya, it should be Yukta Vairagya. Must be in relation to Krishna. That is real detachment. Prabhupada says, One can be liberated from all adverse circumstances simply by seriously engaging in devotional service. How this devotional service develops and becomes mature is explained here. We're hearing how it develops and becomes mature. This serious devotional service can develop by hearing for long periods of time. Oh, you may say, oh, classes for two hours, or two, uh, two hours, we heard for two hours. This is a long time. It's not very long in terms of eternal time. Eternal time, <laughs> right? The time, or in, in, compared to the time of, on Lord Brahma's planet, on the higher planets in the universe, our time is short. We don't have long on this planet. It's a quick it's a short life. So use this time to develop our hearing, hearing about Krishna, hearing about the Lord. And then associate with devotees and hear from them about the Lord's transcendental appearance, activities, disappearance, instruction. That's why we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam. The whole Srimad Bhagavatam is full with all of this. The Lord's appearance, His activities, His disappearance, His instructions, that, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. So we have to associate with devotees who are doing these things. We have to hear from them about the Lord's activities. You may want, you may feel, though, these people, they shouldn't do that, they shouldn't go and take money for their own golf or the badminton or whatever they do. <laughs> People do so many strange things. What we should be doing is Harinam Sankirtan, and preaching, distributing books. So we have to associate with devotees and then we must hear these scriptures repeatedly from reliable sources in order to become fixed in serious devotional service. So hearing one time is not enough. We know we read these books again and again. We have to hear again and again. Lord Brahma read the Vedas three times. So it's a good idea to read these different slokas and purports, read the, read the chapter, not once, not twice, read it three times. It will be very good for you and certainly you'll get so much from it. So this is, this is how we can perform serious devotional service. So what's the conclusion of all that? Through engagement in such devotional service, one becomes freed from the contamination of maya. Right? The liberation means to get free from the modes of nature. So you get free from the maya, the contamination of maya is also removed. That is the effect of devotional service. All right, someone read this next quote. Hare Krishna Maharaj, 
how can one estimate his development of krishna consciousness it is said that development of krishna consciousness is exhibited by proportionate material detachment or vairagya if one does not separate himself from material enjoyment it is to be understood that he is not advancing in krishna consciousness renunciation in krishna consciousness is so strong that it cannot be deviated by any attractive illusion okay so how are you doing how is your development going on mataji have you developed a lot of detachment i i don't know maharaj whether i have developed detachment but definitely i am attracted to listening to the uh, krishna katha bhagavatam and uh, and the classes i am attracted to it i like to talk about uh, krishna pastimes to the children and my parents at home so that i have developed but at the, the detachment from the material i don't think so it has been happening yet okay that will come gradually in course of time as you, as you cultivate more knowledge and as you continue to engage in devotional service then certainly that detachment will also mature you have to be patient <coughs> we understand our advancement our development by yeah, well generally we speak of different levels we talk about kanishta madhyam and uttamam and what is the basis of the distinction of kanishta madhyam and uttama how is it how how are they different in terms of what qualities uh, in terms of faith marriage yes faith is one thing and something um, and something else and the knowledge uh, you know about uh, krishna yes right faith and knowledge will make the difference and there's something else which makes the difference between kanista madhyam and uttamam how they interact with the uh, with the uh, other other devotees the like uh, the uh, the uttama adhikari will be equal to everybody he will look equal uh, you know and uh, the madhyam adhikari although he looks Oh, 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 uh, the deities, the kanishtas, they look in uh, deities separately. And yes, right. Yes, actually, it's based on how much we've developed our attachment to Krishna, mm. our loving service to Krishna. Now, somebody may not be a great jnani, and they may not be a great vairagi, but they may have very deep attachment to Krishna. they have so much love and affection for krishna we see people we see some devotees like that you know they they they're very dedicated to service to krishna and they they they're really advanced devotees even though they may not be great scholars and philosophers or like that but they're very devoted they have a lot of devotion and they're very careful to do everything the proper way all right so uh we want to understand our our advancement how much we're able to avoid things which are uh, deviating us from our devotional service just like Maharaj, i have a question maharaj yes maharaj we say that uh, devotional service is easy and sublime but when we see that uh, it is so so much uh, endeavor is there that means only very few souls are going to get liberated uh, how 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 to understand that maharaj well you have to understand that most of the souls are already liberated in the spiritual world there's many many more souls than what are here in the material world remember the spiritual sky is 3 times bigger than the material world the material creation is just 1/4 the whole spiritual sky is 3/4 there's an infinite number of 
uh, planets and infinite number of living entities in the spiritual world, many more. So here in this material world, we are the conditioned souls. We are the minority. So you say not many are getting liberated. Yes, that's right. Why not? Because we're envious, because we have material desires, because we're not qualified to be liberated. So we stay here in the material world. What do you want? Do you think Krishna sh should open the doors and let all the conditioned souls come to the spiritual world? That will be wonderful, Maharaj. No, don't be stupid. That will be, ter that will be terrible. Because they don't want to be there. They don't want to be in the spiritual world. They don't want to have to sit and hear about Krishna all day. They don't want but to... after attending Bhakti Vaiva, we want to go back, Maharaj. Oh. Well, we hope, we hope you'll keep that desire to go back. But you have to understand the, the, the conditioned souls, mostly they don't want to go back. They don't want to be in a place where there's Krishna consciousness. They want to be where there's a lot of maya. It's maya which attracts all the conditioned souls. It's, you know, the, the, the bright lights and the city life and the, and the casino and the gambling and uh, all these things. This is what attracts the conditioned souls. They don't want Krishna consciousness. If they have to go to the spiritual world and see people chanting the holy name and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam all day, they'll say, oh, boring, oh, terrible. It's not for them. It's not what they want. So they get what they want. People get what they want. If you have a taste, if you develop this strong taste for hearing about Krishna, that will be wonderful. That will help to take you back to Godhead. So we have to develop that interest in hearing and chanting and serving Krishna. That is the sign that we're advancing. The more we're becoming detached from the material, the less we're looking at the television and watching the movies. And the less we're wasting our time and so many foolish mundane activities, then we know we're becoming more serious about Krishna consciousness. So yeah, we do want to become ad advanced. Okay, going ahead, next quote. Yes? Anal <coughs> Analyze the two main diseases of material contamination. Thus, his main diseases are that he wants to be one with the Supreme Lord or he wants to become the Lord of material nature. The Karmis try to utilize the resources of material nature and thus become its Lord and enjoy sense gratification. And the, the Jnanis, the Salvationists, who have become frustrated in enjoying the material resources, want to become one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead or merge into the impersonal. I cannot read after that. Effulgence. Effulgence. Merge into the impersonal effulgence. Okay. So what is stopping us from advancing? These diseases. This is what's stopping us from making advancement. One is we want to become one. We want to become one with the Supreme. We want to become the because actually we envy Krishna. So we minimize Krishna's position and we become one. We actually think we become the Supreme. So karmis, they try to use the material energy for their sense gratification and the jnanis, they try to enjoy the material world but failed. They want to become one and merge. And so both the jnanis and the karmis, they want to try to
Hare Krishna. Answer to Devahuti's question in verse 20, 24 to 26. Prakriti cannot harm an enlightened soul. Even if the great fear of bondage is avoided by mental speculation and inquiry into the fundamental principles, it may still appear again since its cause has no not ceased. Mm. So the fear of bondage, the fear of the material energy, but the point is prakriti cannot hand cannot do harm to an enlightened soul because the, the enlightened soul will understand the prakriti in relation to krishna he won't see it as anything separate from krishna that is the vision of the devotee So the fear is, the fear of bondage is avoided by mental speculation and, and inquiry, but it may still appear again because they didn't take to devotional service. Therefore, it can appear again. That's the point. That if they don't take up devotional service, then that you, you cannot just get away from the fear of bondage by speculation or by cultivating jnana. There has to be real devotion. The material energy can only be overcome by surrender to Krishna. So that's a very important point for us to always remember. There's no real solution to the problems except Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada gave a big seminar on this in Mumbai, in 1977, final year of his life, that there's only one scarcity in the world, Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada explained all the problems of the world can be solved by God consciousness. It's so important, you know, while we see Russia and Korea at war with each other, if they would just chant Hare Krishna and become devotees and take up God consciousness, all the problems would be solved. That's a, a big wish, but it's a lot to ask for, of course I know, but we have so many nice devotees. We have so many wonderful devotees there. The problems of the world. The problem is no Krishna consciousness. It's not the because it's a, it's not the, the problem is not prakriti. It's how we use the prakriti. We create the problems. Okay, go, it goes on text twenty four by discovering the faultiness of his desiring to lord it over material nature. And by therefore giving it up, the living entity becomes independent and stands in his own glory. So that's good. He, he understood it was wrong to try to lord over the material nature. So he gives up that tendency to try to be the lord. And instead, he becomes independent and he understands his position, that he's simply a servant, that he's, he, he is what he is. He's not the supreme, he's not the ultimate controlling force. He's just simply a tiny individual struggling with the material energy. We see some people, they're very afraid of the material energy. They don't want to see anything, they don't want to touch money, so all of these different things. Remember that story about the one, the man, the, the man in, uh, he didn't want to touch any money, but, but actually he had a lot of money. But he let people know, he had a painting picture, a picture taken of him, money is on the table, and he was putting his hands away and saying, no, he didn't want to touch it. 
And, but Prabhupada said, actually, this man had a lot of money, but the money was all under the table. So devotee is not afraid of the material nature because we know how to use it. We use everything for Krishna. Just like money, we use it for Krishna. And we use a lot of money in the service of Krishna. Building big temples like a TLVP and putting on big festivals like Gorpunima festival and printing so many books and giving them out, and distributing prasadam. So many activities are going on. The devotees were telling me about how in Delhi during the lockdown they had this incredible program to distribute prasadam to all the people. They, they had so many people taking prasadam, going around delivering prasadam for people. Thousands of plates every day. All right, so the, the, the illusion of the material energy that it's mine and the, or that it's, it's, it's going to do harm, this is like the dream. We're coming back, the, again, we're talking about these different levels of consciousness, the sleep, deep sleep and awake. Oh, oh, I, I, oh my God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Recording in progress. Okay, we're back here. We're talking about the enlightened soul. That material nature doesn't trouble him. So a person of discrimination is like an awakened person who is not affected by a dream because, well, first of all, the dream. In the dream you may imagine, tiger is coming, tiger is coming to eat me, oh, tiger is coming. So you're very afraid, but then when you wake up, there's no tiger, you're in your home, you're safe, there's no tiger there, nothing to worry about. So you don't have to be afraid of the dream. So here also, Vedita Tattvasya, he knows the absolute truth or the elements. Yunjato Mai Manasam, he has fixed his mind on me. So this is the situation, you want to conquer over the fear of the material energy, we have to understand the Absolute Truth, that all, all of this Prakriti is the energy of the Absolute Truth and see everything in relation to Krishna. And then finally, Atmaramashya, he rejoices in the Self. So this is very nice, devotee has no fear of the material energy, prakriti is not going to, material energy is not a problem for the devotee. Devotee spiritualizes the prakriti, using it all in the service of Krishna. But the jnanis, they want to 
go away from the prakriti. They give up the material world. They turn away from it. If they see money laying on the floor, Prabhupada gives the example, if money is laying on the floor, then they'll leave it there. They'll say maya, just trouble. But the devotee wants to use it for Krishna. Okay, now, text 27, the distinction between pure devotees and mixed devotees. There's a distinction. We've got pure devotional service and mixed devotional service. We should understand the difference. A mixed devotee engages in devotional service for the spiritual benefit. That may surprise you. He's, he's doing devotional service for spiritual benefit of being eternally engaged in the transcendental abode of the Lord in full bliss and knowledge. Is that pure devotion? Why is it not why is it not pure devotion? He's not completely dependent on the Lord. Yeah, he wants... There is a desire, there is a desire to go to the transcendental abode. Right, he has, he wants the benefit, right? He wants the benefit from his devotional service. He wants to get something. Now what, what should be the nature of pure devotional service? No expectation at all. Yeah, it should be a high to key, right? Savaipum sam paro dharmo yato bhakti and hoksaje. Ahaitaki apritiatma yayatma super. Pure devotional service must be unmotivated. But here there's a motivation, the spiritual benefit. That is a problem. You want some spiritual benefit? It's not pure devotion, it's mixed devotion. Now, a lot of devotees are in this condition, you know. I know a lot of people, they all think like that. They want, they want, they want to go back to Godhead. I don't want to be, <laughs> we have the, oh, I don't want to take birth again. I want to go back to Godhead. I have to get out of this world. We want the spiritual benefit. We have to understand that is not pure devotion. That is mixed devotion. And we should be very cautious of that. In material existence, when a devotee is not completely purified, he expects material benefit from the Lord in the form of relief from material miseries. <laughs> yeah. We all expect that, right? Oh, why me? I've been chanting Hare Krishna every day for the last five years. Why I have to have this misery? Why this happened to me? We think we have this problem. We want also material gain. Yeah, we should be materially prosperous. And Another, another thing we want is advancement in knowledge of the relationship between Krishna and the living entity. Knowledge as to the real nature of the Supreme Lord. So this is another benefit we want. We expect to know about Krishna and the relation, the nature of, the nature of Krishna Krishna doesn't reveal everything to his devotee, to everyone. He's very confidential in some many ways. When a person is transcendental to these conditions, then he is called a pure devotee. He does not engage himself in the service of the Lord for any material benefit, or for understanding of the Supreme Lord. His one interest is that he loves 
the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he spontaneously engages in satisfying him. So that's his one interest. He loves Krishna and he's always working to satisfy him. A devotee's attention is concentrated only upon the eternal loving service of the Lord and therefore the power of death has no influence over him. In such a devotional state, a perfect yogi can attain the status of immortal knowledge and bliss. All right, so that is pure devotion. We want to conquer over death, we have to come to that level, concentration on simply wanting to please Krishna, the perfect yogi. All right, are there any questions? Yes, Maharaj. Could I go ahead? Uh, yes, Hare, Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranams Maharaj. Maharaj, at the beginning, you mentioned uh, three levels of faith, uh, Kanishta, Madhyama and, and Uttama. And, and then when I analyze myself, you know, I go through so many anxieties and, and that indicates lack of faith. So, so in spite of knowing Surudam Sarva Bhutanam, uh, any, any anxiety should not come of whatsoever. So, so how to progress, uh, Maharaj? Hare Krishna. No, uh, you say any, you, any, uh, because anxieties are going to be there. Even in the spiritual world, anxiety will be there. Anxiety for Krishna. We can have, the gopis can be in anxiety for Krishna. The devotees were in anxiety to get land and to build, to build the temple and to raise funds. The devotees are in anxiety of how to distribute books. <laughs> so that's transcendental anxiety. So we have, to, we have to develop transcendental anxiety. Our anxiety shouldn't be in relation to our own sense gratification, but it should be for, the, for our service to Krishna. That is good, that kind of anxiety, that's good. If our anxiety is just, oh, you know, my business is no good, or my job's not going well or something, you know, you know, that's not very good. But really, we want to connect our anxiety more into, into a Krishna conscious anxiety. So it's not that anxiety stops, just like desire doesn't stop, but we purify desire. And so in the same way, anxiety doesn't stop but we want to connect the anxiety, we want to become more anxious for the service of Krishna, how we can please Krishna. So you have anxieties, we, are, we all have anxieties, yeah? but we want to keep the, use these anxieties you know, to enhance our Krishna consciousness. That's the idea. But does this not indicate lack of faith or, or kanishta faith or low faith, you know, if, if one is in anxieties? Well, it's a question of how the anxiety is going to affect you, you know. If somebody has low faith, then uh, the anxieties will, you know, he'll, he'll want to give up Krishna consciousness. He may feel Krishna consciousness is wrong. And so, but somebody else who is more elevated than the Madhyama devotee, he has, he has stronger faith, he may not have much knowledge, so he can have also anxiety. People also come to him and tell him, you know, oh, this Hare Krishna, no good, oh, you're bothering me, why are you troubling me? And that, 
And so he doesn't have much knowledge, but he has his, his faith is strong. May be, uh, there may be anxiety there, but still he, his faith remains strong. And somebody who's on the topmost level, you know, they have faith and knowledge. And somebody comes and they're, you know, they're arguing and they don't like our philosophy and they didn't like the things we do and our practices and they have a lot of complaints about us. But he can defeat them. He just, you know, it's an anxiety that people are coming and complaining and they don't like Krishna consciousness. That there's always anxiety for people, for everyone. You can't stop anxiety, but we can use it for our service to Krishna. Be anxious about how to become Krishna conscious, how to remember Krishna more, how to transcend the attachment to the material world. How to keep Krishna there in my mind. That should be the anxiety. Thank you, Maharaj Tanvat Pranams. But don't think you can ever get away from anxiety. <laughs> Anxieties, we have to just accept. This, it's, it's part of the nature of life that there will be anxiety, the nature of the world. And this is not Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, no anxiety. Right? Vaikuntha means no anxiety, but this world means anxiety. This is anxiety. But just try to relate our anxieties into Krishna conscious anxiety. Hare Krishna. And one more question from Gopi Chana Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, in, in one of the slides uh, of a mixed devotee, uh, there is a, one last point you said, the advancement in the knowledge of the, uh, of the relationship between the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Living Entity, uh, Knowledge as the real nature of the system. Can you can you please throw some more light on this, Maharaj? How we can understand this? Advan uh, advancement is going to depend on our knowledge, right? Advancement will depend on two things: our knowledge and detachment, the gyan and the vairag. Then we give the example just like gold reserves, gold just like every country has a currency. You know, you have dollars and you have uh, ringgits and you have dirhams and these different things, they all have different values. What makes a difference? Why is the, you know, one hundred dollars is different from a hundred dirhams or a hundred yen or something? What makes a difference is the gold reserve. So the gold reserves of a devotee are understood in terms of his gyan and vairagya, the knowledge which he's acquired in relation to the Lord and the relationship between the Lord and the living entity, and the detachment from the material energy. That's what will make the the difference in his spiritual advancement. These two things are like the gold reserve for a devotee. They give him the spiritual strength to progress more in Krishna consciousness. Gyan and Vairag. Now, Gyan is knowledge about the Lord. We have to understand his position, how he's the controller and how he's the supreme, and what, what are his wonderful qualities, and how does he relate to his devotees. So we know from the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna said, ye yatamam prapadyante tam stataiva bhajamiya, as they surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. 
And then Krishna says, Sarva dharma parigyachna mami kam sharanam braja. That if we surrender all of our dharmas to Krishna, he will free us from all of our obligations and debts. And Krishna also said, Yoga kshema bahami aham. For one who meditates on my transcendental form, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. So these kind of things, the devotee wants to know these things, he wants to be convinced about this and he wants to remember that and know truly that the Lord means it when he says it in the Bhagavad Gita. He's not just saying it, he actually means it, he's going to do it. He's actually there as a person and he's, he wants to help us, he's going to relate to us according to our mood, according to how we surrender and how we approach him. He will reciprocate. So this is the idea. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, the advancement of the knowledge is uh, increases our faith uh, to surrender the law. But then here in this slide, it is said it is uh, it is uh, the advancement comes under the mixed devotee category. How can we understand this? Advancement comes where? Under the mixed devotee category, he is telling. Mixed devotee category. Is it not a, a right way to increase the knowledge so that we can surrender more, increase the knowledge so that we can explain more about the Lord, increase the knowledge so that our faith on the Lord increases? So how come this comes under the mixed devotee category? Well, it's based on, you know, to come to the level of pure devotion, you have to come through the mixed devotee and come up to the pure devotee. We have to gradually become detached from all of that knowledge and, act, so, and just simply depend on the Lord. Just simply surrender everything to the Lord without condition, without any thinking about what we know. We can never fully understand the Lord. We're thinking, oh, I want to know this, I want to know that. <laughs> you know, this is our, that's our material calculations. We're trying to understand. But remember, the Lord has inconceivable powers. His potencies are inconceivable. How much can we understand them? We can know something of them. We know something of the Lord's potencies, but we can never know them in full. Certainly knowledge is good. It's of the four kinds of people who come to Krishna consciousness, Lord Krishna describes, you know, the four reasons why people surrender to him. And of those four reasons, the best one is the one who comes in search of knowledge. But then Lord Krishna also describes, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. Such a soul is very rare. So the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Krishna. And when we surrender to Krishna, then we're not thinking about the knowledge, what we know, how much we know about Krishna. We just simply surrender ourselves to Krishna. We take shelter. What do you think? I'm, I'm only, I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to understand, uh -huh. but I have, I'm, I'm getting stuck with whether the desire to know more about the Lord, the, the desire to understand more about the Lord. Uh, yes, you can know. Impediment? 
Well, it, it, it comes under the mixed, mixed. Uh, uh, I mean, is it a medical design? Well, the, it's described as mixed devotion. If our motivation is simply knowledge, it's not the. Ah, okay. That's the point. You see, if the motivation is just simply, I want to know this. Our motivation has to be to please Krishna, devotion to Krishna. It's, and then Krishna said, you know, to those who are devoted to me, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Remember, it's devotion which conquers Krishna. It's not knowledge. Okay, speaking comes from Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we want to... Yes, we, we, we do like to know something. We like to know something. But the important thing is we want to love Krishna. What's the priority? What's the real focus it's on loving Krishna? Service to Krishna. What can, what can we do for Krishna? Not to, what I want to know, I want to be this, I want to be a scholar, <laughs> you know. And we don't know much, we can never know, whatever we know is very <laughs> insignificant. But if we can love Krishna, if we can show that love to Krishna, that is a real success. Okay? And they want to show the darshan of the temple in Balram Desh for you. Oh yes, where? The temple in Balram Desh, Bahrain. I'm not seeing it. Angresh, you're going to Prabhu? He is spotlight, Mataji. So, Mataji. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. Oh, they've opened the temple again, huh? The temple is open only, Maharaj. Only for Gaur Purnima it was open, Maharaj. Oh, only for Gaur Purnima, okay. Maharaj, this is the new altar for Srila Prabhupada, Maharaj. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is the Charana of Srila Prabhupada, recently uh, inaugurated by His Holiness Banu Swami Maharaj, just last two months before. All right. Is Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj in Dubai now? And he's, in, he's in Dubai. Oh, yes, very nice. Is that made there Maharaj, in Dubai? Maharaj, we are all eagerly waiting for your visit to Balram Desh Maharaj. <laughs> yes. Yeah, beautiful. Right. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. Right. Thank you for the darshan. Hare Krishna. Thank you, 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 Krishna. Thank you,